Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Hi everyone, this is Rohit from Life Self Mastery and today I'm excited to have Naresh Mulchandani, who is an ardent problem solver and engineer at heart. His love for home cooked food is what he, he what the what got the ball rolling and got stretched to where it is today. He has over 12 years of experience in data analytics and data architecture with companies like McKinsey, Citibank, and Deloitte. Narish is an alumni of IIT Mumbai. Welcome to the show, Narish. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Awesome. So, you know, you have a very interesting journey. You, st- you started you, you started in India and then uh, you, you moved to US uh, as an immigrant. What, what made you start... Uh, French and you know how did your journey as a, as a as an entrepreneur begin? Right, so I've I've had uh, I've been uh, with uh, corporate uh, life uh, for for the biggest part of uh, you know uh, my adulthood. Uh, I worked with uh, companies as you mentioned like Deloitte and Citigroup and McKinsey and so on. Um, mm-hmm. But besides those, I've I've always had that itch, uh, the entrepreneur's itch that you know you want to try and solve problems, trying to do something else. Uh, but it's hard to break away from from your corporate lifestyle because you know your existing lifestyle kind of counts on on uh, your salary that you bring home every day, every month. I'm sorry, and uh, you know so it's kind of hard to break away from that. But besides that, I've had many side things, any many failed you know startup ideas and and so on and so forth. So it was always a thing that you know I had to get back to. Um, Fred started about uh, five years ago when uh, we moved to uh, to Manhattan in New York, and we realized that uh, you know just uh, getting our groceries was was an absolute chore. Um, if you are from uh, New York, uh, you know I'm not sure how it would relate to say you know your Indian audience, but it would be like you know say you're in Gurgaon and you have to go to say Delhi to get your groceries, and that's how ridiculous it was uh, before Fred started. And, uh, you know, that's where we were. And we knew many other folks who were in the same boat, who were making that same trip every weekend. And that's how Fred started, you know, was a personal pain point. Okay. And, uh, you know, when, when you were, you were younger, uh, you know, in, in your childhood time, did you, did you, did you get influenced by, by a family uh, or to, 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 you know, be an entrepreneur or something? Because... Uh, uh, you know, you had your other IID friends who, who building their own businesses, and you just, uh, you know, had this entrepreneurial itch forever. Right? No, yeah. I mean, if you go to IIT, you'd see that you know folks are really competitive, really smart, uh, and many, many of them have their own companies. But that's not really, I guess, the starting point. The seed was, uh, I guess, laid when I was younger, when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I, I remember when I was, I guess, 10 years old, I was writing down business ideas with my cousin on the rooftop. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, my uh, my dad was an engineer, engineer, so, you know, he wasn't really an entrepreneur, but my granddad was, uh, who had his own bakery. And we would hear stories about, you know, how how hard it was to, to start his bakery business, uh, you know, back in the days, uh, back when India and Pakistan were partitioning off. And uh you know, I guess that uh, that put the seed in, and that's where the itch has been uh, throughout my life. Okay, uh, and so you know, um, uh, I, I want to know you you you're doing grocery delivery for ethnic communities only in New York, right? Uh, do, do you have other competitors in the, in the same segment? Right. Yeah, we do. I think uh, right around when we started. Uh, is when a few other competitors uh, popped up, and you know, some after that as well. Uh, there really weren't uh, any options before. If there were any good options, I probably wouldn't have even started Fetch or not would have considered seriously. Um, but uh, as I said, there really weren't any options when I started out. And uh, it started because of the personal need to get, get it delivered. Uh, there are there are a few companies even now, uh, but I think uh, you know we're doing pretty well compared to them. You know, speaking competitively, uh, we have the edge in customer service, in the product selection, and product quality, and all of those things. Um, we focus uh, like crazy on our customer, and our customers would would you know tell you that um, you know that we are different, you know, and so I think that's the backbone of the company that I'm trying to build here. Okay, uh, because I understand we have Instacart and Amazon, you know, who, who, who are in the same 
uh, a marketplace you know so yeah uh, how are you different from them are you focusing on uh, on on only few ethnic communities and that's that's going to be the game plan going ahead right so there have been you know a lot of learnings i guess throughout the journey um and yeah we started out with uh, you know south asian grocery which is our indian pakistani groceries in new york and uh, it's not something that you know amazon is doing or instacart is doing or fresh direct is doing or any of these companies are doing and so you know even now you know none of these big companies are still addressing this market and so there is a gap in the market that needs to be addressed which is what fresh is trying to do and so the plan going forward is that you know there are similar gaps in other ethnicities as well uh, it, you know I, i'm not really sure you know if most of your audience is in say india you know it would be kind of hard to figure out but one you know if if you're in new york you realize there's many many ethnicities there's people from you know india there's people from china there's people from you know philippines or middle east or south america or whatever and all of those different ethnicities they have the same problem like you know you have your regular mainstream american groceries that you can find in the neighborhood you know like i could just walk down my building and you know you know the the next building i have you know regular mainstream groceries i can get you know whatever it is pasta or you know soup or whatever else uh, i i want to get i can get that but they don't really have the indian stuff you know like i want you know we eat you know 40 different kinds of rice and 100 different kinds of you know lentils and uh, spices and so on so forth you can't really get those in you know any of these platforms and so which is which is why you know fresh addresses that problem and it hopes to address that problem for other ethnicities as well okay and uh, you know we will talk about the about the public platform uh, but but you know uh, also you know uh, you you're doing around 25000 orders and you know you're around a million dollars of an, annual revenue uh, uh, run rate going on uh, i want to know how, you know when you started off how did you get your first 100 customers what were the customer acquisition channels for you right i think i think the first few maybe not 100 maybe the first 10 customers were just friends and family uh you know me reaching out to friends and family letting them know that you know hey this is uh, something i'm starting out and uh, why don't you give it a shot and so that's i guess how the ball started rolling uh but after that it was you know initial um advertising on facebook and so on that uh, you know that i guess uh, kind of got the ball to where we got to in you know say month 3 or 4 or whatever it took us a long time to get to the first 100 customers it took a really long time to get us to the first 1000 customers um but uh you know it's it's the snowball effect i think uh you know things pick up steam as as you go forward okay and uh, uh you know uh, so uh, you're targeting the uh, indian and pakistani ethnic communities uh so uh, so your platform is like a marketplace for uh indian you know consumer products to to get listed on your platform so uh um, so the are you targeting only uh, only uh, you know products manufactured in india to get listed on on your marketplace or you know do you, do you also uh, uh produce your own products uh, you know you can just uh, you know talk about about grocery uh, 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 about groceries on your platform you know how how does it work right so i mean it so i think in my head a marketplace is where you have buyers as well as sellers right. and so uh, you know that would be true if i had the the local grocery stores on the platform uh, uh-huh. that's not the case i think uh, that's also another uh, key thing that i want to clarify is that when we started out we, we were kind of buying from retail stores you know some of the retail stores that exist here we were buying directly from them uh we were paying a retail price on on all of the product that we were uh you know buying and and selling them to the customers at a slight you know markup but uh, you know we realized uh, i think a couple of years or maybe two and a half years into the business that that model is not uh you know going to fly it's not going to scale uh in that it's not profitable and so you know we had to uh do some soul searching try to figure out how to fix this and so we realized that you know we have to change the business model and so which is why we set up our warehouse we started buying directly from distributors and wholesalers bring the cost of goods sold down and that brought profitability in the system and uh and so we're we're not really partnering with retail stores we're you know actually direct competition to them Oh, and okay. uh, so we don't really have any sellers on the platform we own the the store we own the warehouse we own the goods 
and you know we're providing the service of delivery. Okay, and and, and you know uh, you're doing around a million dollars of annual uh, revenue. Uh, what are your profit margins? And uh, you know, if you can talk about your customer acquisition cost and you know a few other uh, uh, you, know, you know points uh, which would interest people to to know more about your product. Right. So yeah. So we're doing about a million two, million three uh, in uh, annual revenue run rate uh, right now, uh, which is basically just taking the last uh, month's revenue and multiplying it by twelve. Uh, okay. You know, simple numbers like that. And uh, yeah. So the net profit again, the numbers are still small. In that, you know, say if we're doing say hundred thousand dollars in revenue in a month right now, uh, numbers are still small. In that, uh, you know, if one month we decide to say buy some equipment worth $5,000, then your net profitability number takes a big hit, you know? Um, and so, you know, there are uh, variances, I guess, from month to month, but on, you know, on a rough, uh, on an average month, I guess, uh, the net profit margin is about 10%, which uh, is on the much higher side for, you know, grocery companies and grocery stores and grocery delivery companies and so on. Um, yeah, so you know those are the numbers right now. So you know about hundred thousand dollars in monthly revenue, about uh, forty forty five thousand dollars in gross profit, and about ten thousand dollars in net profit. Okay, and uh, uh, you know you you used a crowdfunding platform like uh, Republic. You know why, why did you not go through uh, uh, the the route of for like like angel investors or VCs to uh, uh, to to look at funding? So two things. One is that we did, in fact, uh, try to uh, go through angel investors and, you know, VC networks and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. But apparently, you know, it's not, you know, if, if I could phrase it, let me think. So if I could phrase it, I could say it's not really easy to raise money for something that is uh, fairly small, requires a lot of capital, you know, to grow. And the scalability is... Uh, you know, in question in that a lot of investors do see doubt, you know, how, uh, how this would scale. We have a plan in place and I can talk about that, but uh, at, on, you know, on the get go, they have concerns about capital because this is a capital intensive business. You need a lot of inventory to hold and so on. Um, but uh, apart from that, I think the bigger reason we moved to Republic is, is uh, just when I had uh, met the first, uh, representative from Republic, I had ideas of reaching out to my existing customer base just to raise money. And, and the reason being that my customer base is, you know, essentially uh, well-to-do South Asian families in New York, in Manhattan, many of them in, in finance, you know, many of them in investment uh, backgrounds. And so, you know, we felt we should reach out to our customers to try and raise money. And, uh, you know, Republic offered that perfect platform to, to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, so you know, you, you you're looking at funding from uh, SNIs and agent investors, and uh, you you do have a plan on you know you know how investors can get an exit. So, uh, so can you can you also you know what is the plan uh, going ahead in terms of how many ethnic communities you want to uh, you want to address, and what what are what are the what is your roadmap going ahead? Uh, say that again. Are you talking about future ethnicities? Yeah, future ethnicities and, and what is your roadmap? Uh, are, you, are you going to say only to New York or the other cities also? You're trying to, right, uh, so the roadmap, uh, we have a very clearly defined roadmap or, you know, on paper as well, not just in our heads. And okay. so the roadmap was that, you know, the previous phase where we set up the warehouse, we wanted to actually uh, just see if we can be profitable. And uh, we wanted to set up the warehouse processes in place. We wanted to set up uh, the vendor network in place. And so we did all of those things. We accomplished, you know, profitability and warehouse setup and inventory and all of those things. And right. so that was the previous stage. The current stage is where we have everything running. The machine is going well. Now we just need to, you know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, make it go fast, I guess, if I could say. And so, you know, it's in a sense, you know, let's try and grow this as quickly as you, as you can. And so the plan for the next one year is to grow fresh in the same ethnicity, uh, you know, at least a two to three X in the next one year. And once we've done that, then you have a model uh, that is perfect in terms of the processes, in terms of, you know, your technology, your marketing, your, you know, backbone supply chain and inventory and all of that. And you take this model and you can start replicating it. 
and you know there's no limits in you know how how many times you can replicate that model be it you know south asian groceries or you know say jersey or you know other states geographically speaking or you start with you know uh, other ethnicities which which could be middle eastern south american of uh, chinese korean all of these far east asian countries and uh, you know so that's the plan you know um, so so basically phase 1 as i mentioned was you know set up the warehouse phase 2 is grow phase 3 is replicate and uh, you know replication now i think uh, in our heads the next uh, step would be we start with say the middle eastern population and middle east and why because um the the neighborhood that we're in queens has a lot of you know greek population is the biggest the greek population in all of uh, america it has the biggest uh, uh, israeli population and so middle eastern uh, you know seems like a, a likely target uh, you know for the next step and so which is what we're targeting of uh, targeting for you know in in the next one year or so okay and and uh is is should should be assumed that uh, most of the southeast asian population uh, would be in new york san francisco or uh, some parts of texas or, or, or do you think you know they're they spread all across and 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 how do you, how do you plan to target this this sort of an audience uh, is it is it is a word of mouth but if you want to we want to really take it to the next level and and deploy all the money that you've raised Uh, how do you, how what is your plan on how to reach out to this sort of an audience online or offline right yeah so i think the plan as we grow and talking geographically would be to get to all of these major you know metro areas be it bay area be it chicago be it you know texas uh, you know uh, dallas houston so on uh, yeah. could be toronto so in canada um and so but just looking at these major metro areas where you have big pockets of ethnic population and uh you know i think it would be financially you know sound to start another ethnicity in the same location before you start you know spreading geographically so that would be you know a a step before that that you add multiple ethnicities and you know you have in new york you have many ethnicities that you can start with and so why go to say chicago say for instance um before you've added a couple of more ethnicities to the same location which you can really well do uh because you're you're in new york um and uh, so that's one how do you market uh to these communities you would have to do it through you know one local advertising online advertising uh and two uh by referrals by word of mouth you know you have to understand this is an actual problem like people are happy to tell their fellow you know indians or you know whatever ethnicity you're talking about hey you know there's this option i can get you know my indian groceries delivered and they're happy to tell everyone you know all their family and friends about that service and so you know that's uh, that's something that i think uh, would work to our advantage as we grow okay and, and do you think a, a paid marketing campaign uh, would would really work in uh, in reaching out to the sort of an audience yeah absolutely we've been doing it you know to to a small degree albert uh, in new york and uh, it has been uh, working great uh you know that is the the step i guess we need to you know solidify on and put more emphasis on as we grow in new york as i said this one this next one year is the growth phase where we try to get to 2 to 3x and so you know we are counting on referrals we are counting on local advertising uh, online advertising you know be it social media be it google so on so forth uh, or or be it uh, partnering with you know say influencers or you know uh people who who provide recipes and so on so you know we're trying all of these different avenues see which one gives us most success and try and replicate that you know in any new uh, location that we get to okay and, and, and so you know in the ratio you've been running the business for 5 years uh, you know uh, uh, did you did you get any prior funding before and you know how how big is your team and are you are you full time into this uh, uh, business Yeah I'm I'm full time times two uh in that uh you know when you were running a business I guess uh uh you know you you are working on it full time there really is no other way to to do this uh right. yeah and uh, I've been at it about 4 4 and a half almost 5 years 5 would be in October but yeah so 4 and a half years I've been at it and uh, my team uh is you know is you know just the management team if i could say i have an operations person i have the marketing person uh you know ankit is the marketing person you've spoken with him 
and right. uh, you know have a couple of guys on finance and so on on strategy. Uh, but that's you know we're still a pretty small team you know compared to I guess uh, bigger corporations. Uh, so we're still a startup uh, kind of setup, and uh, you know I'm not really counting you know the the number of people I have at the warehouse helping process the orders or doing the deliveries and all of those miscellaneous things. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about for the team, the management team. Uh, the you mentioned also prior. Uh, or money raising efforts. So yeah, that, uh, you know, we haven't really raised any external capital. It's all been, you know, my investment, all of okay. my savings and retirement uh, savings and all of that stuff. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's where we are. Okay, got it. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you used, uh, you know, a Republic platform to, to raise funding. We, we, we're going to put it on the on the show notes because I believe your campaign is going to run till the uh, the end of April. Uh, you know, uh, what are your plans or how much funding are you uh, are looking to raise? And, you know, what, what will be the money used for? Right. So, I mean, the way it's going, uh, and if I can be a realist, you know, I think uh, we can get to say a hundred thousand dollars and, uh, that hundred thousand dollars would, uh, most definitely be going towards technology development, uh, towards, uh, uh, user acquisition and marketing efforts and also on customer retention bits, you know, the, the back end of your technology, which is you implement the CRM, you do segmentation, you do, you know, email automation, all of those things. And uh, that's where the money would be, you know, used towards. And again, as I said, the goal is to get to in the next one year, get to two to three X. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think a hundred thousand dollars is, is going to be, you know, I, I won't say it would be uh, excessive, but it would, it would suffice us to get us there. And uh, that's the goal, I guess. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, I, I I happen to see an ad where uh, you're also uh, in, in the show with the Meet the Drapers. So, so what was the experience like? And uh, you know, uh, uh, and did, did Republic uh, do a, a, a session with you guys for for do, for doing uh, the, the the TV show? Right. Yeah, I think uh, they did a good job uh, organizing it and coordinating it, and all of that was great. I think uh, there were really no issues. Um, the only thing, you know, I guess, uh, my only gripe possible would be that I wish there was a, uh, a rehearsal session run beforehand, uh, okay. because, you know, you're there in the studio and, uh, you know, you're outside talking to everyone, trying to prepare mentally on, you know, uh, how to go about it. But, uh, you know, no matter what sort of preparation you do in terms of, you know, talking about it or trying to figure out how it's going to work. Once you go in that room, uh, you know, you have these uh, four investors you're talking to and you have these bright lights and cameras pointed towards you. And uh, it's, it's a pretty quick thing. It's a 15 to 20 minute exercise. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the confusion is whether you try to work for the camera because, you know, it's being shot and you're, you know, uh, your reactions would be played out for the TV or you try to answer the investors. So, you know, you could do those two things, uh, you know, independently talk to investors, which, you know, I've had many meetings with, you know, you sit down, you try to explain the whole business, but, you know, or you could do the camera thing, but not both of them at the same time. So it was a little bit of, you know, uncharted uh, territory, I guess, if I could say. Okay. And, and, and did you get the funding from the, the Drapers? No, I don't think they do any funding on the show right away. They call you, you know, afterwards, like uh, to to basically declare finalists. And I okay. think uh-huh. maybe they they invest in some of the finalists, a small token amount. Uh, and yeah, we weren't in in those finalists. Okay, and uh, so you know, I, if you can just talk about the Republic campaign, and uh, you, we want to put in the show notes. Uh, uh, you know, anything specific you want to talk about about the about the campaign, uh, uh, which is going to end uh, before the uh, I, I think by by the end of April. Right. Yeah. So the campaign ends end of this month, end of April. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, we just have uh, what about 25, 26 days to go. Uh, sure. Yeah. Let's uh, I guess drum up uh, all the the momentum we can to, to get to the finish line. Okay. Um, and, 
And is there any minimum investment uh, people have to put in to uh, to be part of the journey? Yeah, it's uh, the minimum investment is just a hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, with just a hundred dollars, you could you could be part of uh, what we're building, be part of you know the whole uh, the social aspect of what we're trying to do here. It's not just the you know the money and the business of it, but also the social aspect and you know uh, how we're bringing value to you know to our community in New York here. And that is kind of what drives us and, and our investors so far, like most of our customers who have invested, they believe in, in the social aspect of what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good message to, to spread, if anything. Sure, we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, so let's put you to the top three. Um, now what's your favorite business book? Favorite business book? Oh man, I haven't read one in a while, but uh, there have been a few. How about uh, Predictably Irrational by Dan Riley? Okay. <laughs> That's okay. the last one I remember. Oh, uh, yeah. Got it. And uh, you know, if you could go back in time when you started fresh, what is the one thing you would have focused on? The one thing I would have focused on... Uh, no, I think I did things right. I don't think I have any regrets on how I you know, went about doing things. Um, you know, I, I knew it was going to be hard. I knew uh, the only thing I guess I did not realize or did not know is that, uh, you know, I, I knew that it, you know, it requires, you know, 100, 100% commitment. It requires a lot of persistence and a lot of commitment and uh, you know, perseverance because it could take some time. I just didn't realize it could take a really long time. And so, you know, your whole belief system would come into questioning on how long you can stick with it. And, you know, I, I'll be honest, you know, uh, there have been many days throughout the last four and a half, five years where I questioned myself and I questioned, you know, the purpose of me trying to do this. And, uh, you know, luckily the question, the answer has been on the right side, and which is why we're still here. And, right. uh, you know, it's not always easy. And so, you know, if I could go back and, you know, talk to that person uh, from four and a half years ago, I'll just tell him, you know, be very, very patient. Interesting. And uh, what, what's your favorite online tool, for example, Gmail, Slack, so Say that again? Uh, what's your favorite online tool? Online tool? Uh, online tool, I guess Trello was uh, pretty useful when we started out. Okay. Uh, we don't use Trello as much, but yeah, I guess that's uh, that's a pretty cool tool. Okay, and uh, what's the best way people can reach out to you and know more about Fresh? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you have the website. Uh, we have all of the social media handles. Uh, reach out to us on the Fresh discussion page uh, on on Republic, and uh, and you know, if if anyone feels the need to reach out to us directly, we can be reached out at our email address, which is info at fresh.co. I got it. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, well, thank you, Nish, for coming on to the show uh, and, and speaking to us. Okay, yeah, absolutely. My, my pleasure. It was uh, great talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we teach you how to start and grow your online business. For more information, visit Rohit's blog at www.lifeselfmastery.com.